Hey everybody, Cone here in the garage, giving you an update as to how things are going as we have concluded Garage Week, which ended up being a 41 hour live stream event on Twitch where myself, ZK, and somehow a Kiwi, Daffy Flyer, ended up doing some pretty impressive work here in the garage. If you missed Garage Week, I did make a collection of all of the live streams that took place last week, and that is available in a link down in the description. It's a Twitch collection. I realize watching like VODs and things like that on Twitch is a bit of a nightmare, but if you do want to thumb through it and just see anything or any particular parts of it, it's all there for you. So let's go over everything that happened. Well, maybe not everything, but let's go over the highlights of what happened. The star of the show was definitely ZK. No, the star of the show was definitely the ramp truck. And that is because we have been working on doing a brake upgrade on that truck for quite some time. And when I say working on it, and when I say we, I mean ZK has been trying to figure out a solution to get our 67 F250 here to have front disc brakes. The truck previously had four wheel drums and those might have been passable in 1975, but they're not passable in 2021. The truck just didn't have the braking confidence that I was looking for in modern driving conditions. So the front drums were reserviced by me when I first got the truck. I'm gonna go out there and take a look at the old brake stuff because it's all sitting on the porch truck. Oh, it's bright, now full of water. Somebody's going to be real sad about this, but trust me, nobody wants these parts. You, you basically can't give away this stuff. Uh, it's all going to scrap metal. So out here we have a collection of drums and spindles. These are the old spindles off the truck and the old brake drums. So what the truck actually had was two inch wide pad drums. The truck had the regular set on it. The other option over here, these are what we ended up getting off a parts truck. Um, these are two and a half. This is what would have come on like an upgraded 250 or 350 of I think the next year or so. This is the better drums that would have been, well, better, but still not ideal. It's been raining a lot this week and the bugs out there are insane. So that was the situation with the truck. Now. When I first started working on the truck, I could, I had a heck of a time getting the rear brakes to bleed and, and honestly, I'm pretty sure we drove the thing up here uh, just to move it to North Carolina with uh, only front brakes. And that ended up being an issue. Other people have had this problem with the truck in the past. Like, we're not the first people to, to try and make the brakes better because it had the wrong master cylinder on the stock brake booster and there was some crazy very obviously not stock you know bent lines and everything with with splicers in them it was a mess and the the problem ended up being that the master they had put on there needed a different length rod that pushed in from the brake booster to the master in order to have the right you know basically travel through the master and the rear brakes were never releasing. So could never get them to bleed. And then they would never work because those lines were just solid air and it was never releasing. So essentially the rear brakes were always on, but they were always just on with air. You can see there, I ended up making a gap between the master and the, uh, the brake booster in order to solve that. And that did improve the brakes quite a bit, believe it or not. Uh, four wheel drums are drivable when they're all working. It's just not great by modern standards. I had gotten a different brake rod and I was gonna modify it to make those work, but then things started to look like we were gonna actually do the brake upgrade on the truck. And what that involved was we were going to essentially get a kit to convert the front end of the truck to discs that would include uh, brackets to mount to the spindles, new spindles actually, and a, a more modern, you know, caliper, but all of it was designed for a five lug truck. Our truck is obviously an eight lug truck. It is a heavy duty, I don't think this would be a three quarter ton truck. Um, so this truck has eight lugs on the front. 
that's all fine and dandy, and you can find a ton of parts for eight lug discs, or, or you know, eight lug drum to disc, but you can't with those suckers right there. This is also a two wheel drive truck, and it features Ford's truck staple, at least until the, the mid 90s, I beams, twin I beams. So it's got independent front suspension. There's no parts. If you want to go out there and look right now and try to find a disc brake kit for F250 twin I beams, I challenge you, go ahead, go do it right now. It doesn't exist. So what we were going to do was basically get a kit that was made for a five lug truck and convert that over to working with our eight lug configuration. So we're going to take the kit and put uh, a disc, uh, you know, a rotor that had eight lugs on the smaller spindle and, and just kind of make it work. Cause it just seemed like that was the only way. The, the logical way to do it is to take the whole front end and out of this truck and put a later, like a dent side, like a 79 front end under the truck with all the suspension and everything so that you could use the later disc parts. We wanted to avoid that because these trucks are getting very sought after. It's no longer a case where you can just, you know, pick up one of these things for 200 bucks and peel the parts off of it and go. And I didn't want a whole nother parts truck. I already have one parts truck I can't get rid of. I didn't want another one. So we didn't want to go the route of trying to get all the individual pieces. So we ordered the kit, never got the kit. Unfortunately, with everything that's been going on and getting this manufacturing done, they could never get the parts. Six months later, canceled the order. It was like a thousand dollar kit. I think it was like $900 for this kit. Plus we were gonna need another 200 to put the parts on we needed. Canceled that order. They were really cool. They refunded immediately. And ZK pushed forward trying to find all of the parts to convert this to essentially a 79 disc brake setup in the front, but keeping the 67 front suspension. And that was insane. But that is what has happened. So we have an entirely new braking system that is so many different generations and mismatch of parts. It's insane, but it works. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and take this wheel off and I'm gonna go through and basically check all the nuts and bolts, cutter pins and everything like that. So while I'm doing that, we'll take a little tour of what it takes to put disc brakes on your 67 F250. Now, of course, just because we were putting brakes on there, couldn't just leave, you know, well enough alone. If we're up there, we're gonna do anything else that needed doing up in the front end while we're at it. So we did end up putting new front shocks on the truck as well, because uh, it previously, like, if you've ever tested a shock, essentially you push down on a vehicle and you make sure it recovers, generally within at least two, you know, strokes. It would recover after about five minutes because they had put on the front end of this truck shocks with helper springs, which I've never seen that before. I've never seen somebody put helper springs on the front end of a truck, especially on the shocks like that. That was, that was new to me. So we went ahead and ditched those. Say hello to disc brakes. Hello disc brakes. You know how complicated this whole thing is? I need the spreadsheet that has been made to go through all of the parts that this front end contains. So, we're gonna start out and go in. So the rotor on the truck is from a 1969 F250, right? Yes, 1969 F250. And that is attached to a spindle that is off a 1969 F250. And that is because this rotor has bearings that don't fit the spindle of the 67 F250 front end that we had. 
From there, we don't have a 69 brake caliper. We actually have a 79 brake caliper. And that decision, I believe, was made because the 79 brakes are basically the best that you could get for this suspension configuration. Although all of these parts are different and don't fit with each other, they kept this same basic design well into the 70s. I believe 79 was the last year, if I, if I have that right, uh, that they generally had this architecture on them. So we have a 79 brake disc. It is a two piston and it uses this kind of strange slide pin style. Uh, this does not bolt to anything. It only is retained by these pins, or actually this pin uh, that keeps it from, from going anywhere. It does make it super easy to do pad changes. Not that that's really something we're probably gonna get into. Uh, we do have 79 brake hoses as well. And then up here, we actually have the uh, basically the hose holder off of a 69 off of a 79. <laughs> All right, it's getting confusing already. Yes, off of 79, we have uh, these hose bracket adapters. All right, so we have 69 on the rotor, nice. We have 79 on the dust shield, the bracket, the caliper hold bracket, the caliper itself, and the slides and all that hardware. We have 69 again on the spindle and the king pins and all of that because those king pins are the same size as the king pin receiver, the middle part on the I-beam from the 67s. So that's why we had to use the 69. Uh, and then we have the 69s brake hose caliper holder thing up there. Uh, and there you go. That's how you get front disc brakes on your 67 F250. It's that easy. Uh, we have, of course, done all of the hydraulics as well, and that includes something under the hood. I am gonna go in here and double check, make sure everything is still tight and I don't see any leaks, and I actually do see just a little bit of a leak off of the caliper hose. So let me give that a little snug. I bet you it's a 9 16 As I've learned, 9 16 is the magic size on this truck versus like 10 mil, is the magic size on a Japanese car. And then like 12 mil is the mid-range, 14 mil is, the, is the, the big stuff, like suspension stuff. On this truck, it's either gonna be a half or it's gonna be a 9 16 And if it's not either of those, you gotta break out the big tools. This back on as well. Brake fluid's real hard to tell if it's leaking or residual because it just stays and clings onto things forever. Might as well have that on though. We had some issues when we were first putting everything together of this uh, rotor wanting to be sticky, but uh, that seems to have worked itself right out. I did forget to mention, but we did put a, uh, shoot, I forgot what brand they are. Post me, put this in here. We put a new shock on the front end and it's a much larger piston, a much mar larger body. This is a heavy duty shock, so it should stand up to the uh, rigors it goes through. And do keep in mind, I can't, went through here when I first got the truck and replaced all of the I-beam bushings. I replaced the wheel bearings, although we have just had to do that again. Uh, but the whole front end of this truck has now been gone through in pretty extensive detail. And uh, I feel pretty darn confident about the, the structure of the suspension and brakes and everything on the truck. One thing I might end up doing is unfortunately taking those discs back off because I'm not super happy with the length of studs that they left us with. These American Racing Wheels have a particularly thick centerpiece, so they don't get a ton of stud stick out on them. Now you can see we're getting like, we're getting some serious threat through there. It's not like we're, we're barely getting any engagement on these lug nuts, but uh, it, it could probably stand to be more. I mean, you'll see right here. Thread, 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 thread. We're getting quite a bit of engagement there. Those are pretty long lug nuts. I'm not worried about it. I don't think it's a problem, but it would make me feel a little better if, if the stud went all the way through the nut. Always start your lug nuts by hand, unless you work at Discount Tire or Walmart or whatever, in which case you just, you know, put the socket or put the nut in a socket and, and vaguely point it at the hub 
and give it full power. But if you're actually working on something you care about, start them by hand. We now pause for a moment to thank our based AC. Thank you. You're appreciated. All right, now we look at the last piece of the brake puzzle. It's not ZK, but it is a master cylinder and brake booster. Now these look smaller than the originals. But the reality is they're actually just lower than the originals because it comes straight out through. The old one had this crazy system of levers, much like all of the pedals do on the stock truck. So it, instead of it being a straight shot, it uses a lever to actuate the brakes. And instead of that, this just has your standard, you know, rod coming off of the brake pedal. It is a dual diaphragm booster and in front of that is a master cylinder that goes down into another bit of secret sauce, the CPP proportioning valve. So this is classic performance parts provided all of this. This is actually the company we wanted to get all of the parts from, but uh, unfortunately they weren't able to uh, get us the whole kit. So we ended up still using this half of it. And I'm pretty glad that we did. Uh, other than the fact that it's a nightmare getting it bolted to the firewall and everything. This part of it has been super great. So this is a proportioning and metering valve all in one, and it comes shipped to you just like this. And then it has two front outs versus the old one had uh, uh, basically uh, a block down in the frame rail that split it off into two for the front and, uh, and one to the rear. So what this is doing is because we have front discs and rear drums, this has the delay built into it so that the brakes basically function at the same time. And it has the metering into it so that they're getting the right amount of pressure front and rear. I think those are the right words. If not, you know what I mean. Uh, we do have brake lines run uh, from this down to the fronts and from the rear uh, to basically where the rear split was before. That all went really smoothly, really easily. And while I'm here, ah, that is the worst part of this kit. Oh my God, that hurts so much every time. <laughs> oh yeah, that's gonna be a blood blister. All right, we'll just continue to scratch up this cover. And I might put a touch in that front side. All right, back on you go to get me another day. So that's basically the conclusion of the brake systems. We'll take it out for a ride later this video. It's at this point, I absolutely want to give shout outs to ZK because n none of this would have happened without his input. Uh, maybe, maybe someday I would have figured out something, but uh, I probably would have just continued to wait for the kit. The amount of research and legwork that went into acquiring the parts to get this together is insane. <laughs> like this is, this is probably one of the most intricate, complicated, convoluted things that has ever been put together uh, and on anything I've ever worked on. And it's amazing because it looks so freaking simple. Like everything about it, it, it looks easy, it looks simple, but trust me, it was an absolutely insane thing to put together and he did a ton of work. Not to mention the fact that uh, uh, he and Vodka drove, you know, 16 hours here with a six month old uh, in order to spend an entire week helping me on this. So major thanks to, well, I guess major thanks to ZK and Vodka because you both put up with a lot to, to help get this done. And then by our surprise, uh, Daffy happened to be in America, who is like the one of the co-founders of Camshaft Software, the creators of automation, um, and came down and helped us wrench too, and ate a lot of Biscuitville. 
he ate a lot of biscuit fill. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a great experience. And make sure you make sure you look through at least the clips, if not the vods of of Garage Week, uh, and see all that they did. All right, continuing on the tour of everything that happened during Garage Week. Not only did we do the brake systems on the truck, we also finally fixed the exhaust on the truck. It has had a pretty hellacious exhaust leak ever since we got the, the, the 460 in there. And I always assumed it was because of the exhaust manifolds being cracked. The passenger side one was really cracked and there's some pretty good clips. I'll try to find one of not just the cracks, but uh, also ZK taking a hammer to one of them and splitting it basically in half. No. Actually, the crack did get bigger. Oh, shit. Like, th that, that's a new crack, too. Yeah. Yeah. If I hit it one more time, that'd shatter. Go on, then. Safety squints. <laughs> I mean, these are trash anyway. Oh. Speaking of exhaust leaks. Oh, yeah. Like you can see it just blowing past right there. Meanwhile, that side's clean. Um, it turned out to not just be that, but also in the collectors. I kind of suspected there was something going on with the collectors all along, but I, I figured it was just sort of, you know, a, a crappy fit. It's just a ball and socket style collector. Turns out the, the collector pipes, the end, like the cone bit, the, the socket bit, I suppose, of the ball and socket was too long and it was fouling on the manifolds before it made contact with the ball part. Impossible to see, like you couldn't see it from the outside that it was like that. Uh, but once we had it apart and on the ground, we were able to see that. So we have gone ahead and replaced this passenger side manifold that was very much so cracked with a, uh, just a, you know, from the parts store version which was ridiculously expensive. And we've trimmed the collectors, and that has pretty much 100% resolved all exhaust leaks. We still have a little bit down there by the cat, but no, it's a million times better than it was, and the truck sounds great. It's, you literally can't hear or understand that it sounds bad or sounded bad before. Like, it just doesn't come through video, but I promise you, it sounds a million times better, and even ZK was just blown away with how crappy it sounded before and how good it sounds now. Sounds like, you know, a workhorse truck like it should. We also had a little bit of fun and added some artwork to the garage. So, for a long time I've had this kit of stickers off a 2003 NASCAR Winston Cup team car. I don't know exactly which car it was, but I suspect it was one of the DEI cars, uh, judging by the decal pack. And I've always wanted to do like a silhouette uh, race car on the wall here in the garage. And what we ended up doing is putting on a race car all of our patron sponsors. Very, very cool. And this was a, a project for, for all of us, but uh, mainly, honestly, paint spearheaded the, the artwork here. Did some fantastic lettering on it. Uh, ZK and Bonka definitely helped as well, and I messed up by writing some of the names myself. They're bad. I'm sorry. G-Face. But it's, uh, it's really cool. I've posted some pictures on Instagram. I, I, I don't know why, but this is one thing I've always wanted. I do need. I need to get like a contact adhesive to get these to stick better. Oh no, I lost one. Luckily I've got doubles of all of them. See, I didn't get a, end up getting to use as many of these as I want, and I have a bunch more, so I might do an actual full-on, like, mural of the 2003 car on the inverse side of this wall, on the outside someday. That is, that is a plan. So, that's pretty cool, and thanks to all the patrons for your support over the years, and now you are immortalized on the garage wall, as long as it stands. Hopefully that's a long time. We also did some work on the 240. We actually replaced the supercharger on the 240 with one that ZK modified. I'm not quite ready to call that project done. There's more to it. We're gonna get to that on a future date. But for today, that is pretty much a wrap on everything that has happened on the ramp truck. I'm gonna load up the 240 on the truck and go take a test drive and see if these new brakes perform better than the old drums. They better, 
or JK is gonna cry. doing some test driving with the 240 as you can see behind us maybe it's kind of hard to miss there's a giant thing in the road ahead of us like a giant thing in the road <laughs> ah they're pulling off good timing good timing I tried to record the loading process of the car which went a lot easier now I added a, a stop on the bed so that when I'm driving the car up you hit the stop and that's where it goes which did make it a lot easier I think all in all like from the time I opened the garage up to the time the car was completely strapped down it was like 20 minutes which isn't too bad I'm, I'm getting used to the fact that the brakes are like I don't want to say squishy they're just extremely assisted so breathing on the brake pedal causes it to stop like it stops the exhaust is way better now like you can actually hear yourself think when you're driving it and just like that we're doing 55 so fast gonna try and stop like it matters up here we're gonna try and stop like somebody has not realized they're pulling out in front of a 9,000 pound vehicle wait for this truck to pass just in case it darts off in one direction that wouldn't happen no worry I think We stopped! Brakes, that's really the first time I've gotten on the brakes like that. So they need some bedding yet. I feel like the pedal could still be harder, but I, I don't know if that's just how they are. Like the brakes, they work and the pedal comes to a, a stop. It's just that there's zero like impression that the brakes are doing anything with your foot if that makes any sense what are you i don't know what that was that just crossed the road meerkat i don't know but importantly we st we just came to a pretty hard stop there and it hasn't been very long can we still come to a stop It's not on a dime, but it stops. All right, I'm gonna get up to approximately the same speed I was at before and approximately the same location. None of this is scientific. My butt tells me the brakes are better. All right, break at this one. So if those things are 100 foot, whatever they are, we stopped in one and three quarters of them. Seems good. They do stink. But it gives me immense 
confidence versus how it used to be. Good truck. piston brake disc or sorry no that's not right do up with a uh was holder off of a 69 off of a 79 <laughs> all right it's getting confusing already the rotor would be to a 69 the caliper and and the you have 69 on the dust shield and no that's not right. 